Now, I'm sure that by now you've probably heard about Nano Banana, which is state of the art image AI, text to image, image to image, and it works really, really well. And so if you haven't yet seen it, it's basically a brand new Google based uh, image model. And so you can edit images or you can do regular text to image. And so let me show you a quick demo of how well it works before I show you how, how to build an app that takes advantage of it, right? So here I am at AI studio that google.com and look at these little images that I was able to create using this very, very simple prompts. And here I have another prompt. So we can create another image real quick. I'm just going to go ahead and run that. And it's going to go ahead and create another variation of this icon. And I'm actually creating these icons for an app that I'm building that I'm going to be releasing very, very soon. And so I think these are cool icons that I can use. And look at this cool icon here. Let's go ahead and try a different prompt here. Okay. And let's see how well it does it now. Look at these little, little cool icons in the same style. They look very, very similar, but they all doing uh, a slightly different thing. Now look at this. Really, really nice. Okay, so this is an awesome model. And so not only can you do text to image, you can also do image to image. And that is exactly what I want to show you in this app that I built. Now, before I show you how I build this app, let me show you what this app does just to kind of get you all excited. Okay, so I built this app in Flutterflow and I use some very, very interesting, innovative techniques to make it work exactly how I want it to work in a very kind of user friendly fashion. Okay. So let's go ahead and run this app so that I can show you how it works. And so the idea of this app is to show you how you can use nano banana in your apps, but not in a very simplistic, uh, simple way, in a very sophisticated way that's going to make your users happy. Okay. So this app is going to demonstrate three different scenarios, right? And these are going to be image to image scenarios, right? So we're going to be uploading an image and we're going to be doing something to this image. So in this first scenario, we have an AI product photography studio, right? So the idea is we want to remove the background from this product photo and place the item naturally in a clean lifestyle setting, right? And you can modify this. Uh, in this example, this is a minimalistic living room, right? So lightning should be soft and realistic, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm going to go ahead and upload an image, okay? And so that you can see how well this works. So I'm going to go ahead and click. I'm going to select the first image, okay? And it's going to go ahead and upload. And this is what the image looks like. This is actually a door, okay? And so now this model is going to work, right? So we're going to upload this image. We're going to send it to the model. And then we're going to get a result right back. Okay. And this is the result that we got back. We have the same door here, right? Just the same door, right? That's been placed in a minimalistic living room. And, and it looks really good, right? And obviously you can use this for pretty much anything, right? You can take any kind of product. It's going to remove the background and place it here. And I think it did a fantastic job. Now, let me show you the second scenario. So in this scenario, we're going to be doing a fashion virtual try on. Okay. So we're going to be taking this portrait photo of a person and replacing their outfit with a formal Navy business suit, right? So we want to maintain the person's face, skin tone, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm going to upload the second image, right? So I have this other image. This is what it looks like. Okay. And I just got it from Pexels. So we're going to go ahead and upload it, right? So now it is here and now it is going to be processing it, right? So let's wait a couple of moments. And this is the result that we got. Looks amazing, right? It looks absolutely amazing. Pretty much flawless, right? It basically replaced uh, this red sweater with a navy blue suit. And it looks really, really good, actually. Okay. So let me show you a third scenario, okay? So for this third scenario, we're going to be building an AI storybook creator. Okay. So take this uploaded photo of a person and transform it into a children's storybook illustration style, right? Keep the person's facial features and identity consistent across all generated images. Okay. So let's see how well it does. This is the photo that we're uploading. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and upload it here. This is the photo. Now it's going to send it off to the API. And let's see how it looks. And this is what we got back. Look at this, right? So it's still that kind of reddish hair, right? Very, very similar, but it's now in a uh, kind of this cartoonish spaceship. Okay. And you can use this prompt here to create like a children's uh, AI 
uh, storybook. And as you can see, it works amazingly well, creates super awesome uh, images, and you can use this in all kinds of scenarios. Okay, so now that you've seen the possibilities, right, let me show you how I built this app so that you can do the same or take this app and modify it to your heart's desire, okay? So I used Flutterflow, which is my favorite no-code app builder, super easy to build all kinds of apps. And before I show you how I build this app in Flutterflow, you need to understand the architecture, okay? Because I made some decisions that create a much better user experience than you otherwise would have had if you would have decided to do something else, okay? So first, let me show you a quick diagram here, okay? So that you have a kind of a, a you know, a 30,000 uh, feet kind of view, a bird's eye view. So we have our app here. This is our Flutterflow app. This is what the user is interacting with, okay? And, you know, the user says text to image or image to image, right? They send a prompt. And instead of connecting to the API directly, I'm using Superbase in between. And the reason I'm using Superbase functions, there are two reasons I'm using Superbase functions in between. First, it allows me to hide my API keys. Okay, so that is this API key that I need, right? Because this model is not free. Uh, it's in this environment, right? So there's no way this app can see it. And remember, the app that we're building, it's a, it's a client app. It's on the client. So you never want to be saving the keys anywhere here because when you know your users uh they consume this app they they basically have it on their device okay so it's important to understand and so anytime you're doing uh any kind of um api calls etc you want to you want to have it you know in a way where you're doing it on the server okay that's the first reason the second reason is why i decided to choose this specific architecture is that when we send the prompt we are not refreshing this for to see if if the image has been generated which would be the case generally speaking right in our case we are getting a callback that tells us hey this image is ready here it is right without us needing to constantly you know check if the image is ready because typically with apis most apis uh in this case with google right if you're going to be using google directly you'll have to pull it, right? You'll have to pull it, or you can just wait and, and just sit there, have your user sit there. But that provides a bad experience. You, wanna, you, you want the system to send a call back. You want the system to notify you. And so that is why I'm using Superbase functions because Superbase can create a callback for me that this other system can execute to let me know that the image is ready. And this other system is called FAL, okay? We're actually using... Uh, a product or a platform called FAL at FAL.ai. And this is basically a platform where you can generate images, generate text, even generate movies, right? It's a platform, it's an AI platform, okay? And what's nice about this platform, and this video is not sponsored by them or anything, right? What's nice about them is that they provide these uh, callbacks that Google would not provide to me, okay? So they're basically doing the hard work. They're basically checking themselves if the image is ready and then letting the caller, in this case us or me, uh, whoever, whoever is running this app, letting them know that the image is ready, right? So that is why it's so nice. So take a look at this, right? So if I go into usage, I have a little bit of credits here. And by the way, each generation is only four cents. And this is exactly the same price I believe if you go directly with Google, I believe it's the exact same price here, okay? So as you can see, I generated a bunch of these while I was testing, and all of this cost me a dollar and 35 cents. So a lot less than a cup of coffee, okay? And so this is great because when I send a request to file, it lets me know when it's ready. Google would not do that, and many AI providers do not do that. And as a result, we don't really need to do anything in the app, right? We can just sit there and that's gonna let us know. So the user, we can do a push notification if we want. We can let the user uh, you know, use another app, use other pages of the app, just send a push notification, letting them know that the image is ready, okay? And so in this diagram, we do all of this and then async, asynchronously, right? It's an async event. It lets us know, file lets our Superbase know, okay? So once Superbase knows about it, 
we have something called real-time reads, right? So we can listen on a table, and when there's new data, we can display that data using this real-time functionality that Flutterflow has, right? And so if I go into my uh, Superbase, I have a bunch of tables here, okay? And so I have a job. This is our basic jobs, right? So essentially, anytime I send an image, Anytime I send a request, it displays these jobs over here. And so I have a bunch of these jobs, right, for every image. And as you can see, all of them are succeeded, right? All of them look good. And then we have a table called job events, because for each job, we have different phases, right? It starts here, created, we submit it to file, we get a webhook back, and then it's completed, okay? So it's like four phases, okay, for each job in, in this case. And so we can listen on this table, and when and we can see when that specific job that we have started, because when we start a job, we get a job ID, and then we can see when it's completed, we can display the image. And that is exactly what I'm doing in this app, okay? So when, when the user clicks here, it uploads the image, and it sends an API call. I have an API call here, start flow. We are connecting to our super base, okay? This is connecting to our request over here. And we have a body, image URL, prompt, we're sending all that. We have variables over here. And uh, when and we also automatically, this function here automatically, without us needing to do anything, sends a URL that's going to act as a callback, right? Because if we go into um, our super base here and we go into edge functions, so as you can see, I actually have four edge functions. And you really only need these two, start flow and file webhook. Right, because this starts the whole workflow, and then it it tells the system, hey, when you're done, call this webhook. And so this automatically, you know, file knows about it, so it will automatically call the uh, this webhook with parameters, job ID, you know, additional parameters, stuff like that. And once this gets triggered, it updates our table. Right, it goes back to our tables over here, and it updates it. Right, so in this table editor here. Uh, we had that job events here, and it updates a row for that job ID, letting us know that it has completed. And now in our Flutterflow app, if we go over here, I am actually listening to it, right? So over here, this part here, I have a container that does uh, this request, the Superbase query. And if you edit it, if you scroll down, you see single time query is turned off. I believe by default it's turned on, which means it acts like a, a regular query that's just sent and that's it. Here, this is not a single time query. It's probably the naming is the labels, probably not the best. It should say real time query and then have this on. So this becomes a real time query. And so it's constantly listening. And then when we get, you know, when we get the job ID, but not only that, when we actually, uh, type is completed, we can display the image, right? Because we get this URL in that, in the payload, in the request back that's, uh, in our, um, in our super base here, we get this URL back when it's completed, right, from file, because it has generated the image. And so as a result, we can display real-time data. We can have a spinning here that just spins, uh, displays, it tells the user that essentially uh, we're working on it. You can wait. And here I have a last message that basically displays the last message received on that status. Remember, we have four statuses per, per specific job. And he, and so the user knows, okay, the last status was this. So they're waiting, they're waiting. And we can send a notification. You can send a uh, push notification and push notifications in Superbase. They are actually very, very easy to implement. I have a bunch of videos that tell you how to do that. You can see one video right there. And essentially the way that works is that you have a table that is triggered via a Superbase edge function that connects to, you know, whatever service you have for push notifications. And so anytime you insert a row there, it gets triggered. And so here we are inserting a row here. We can insert another row or we can just trigger a push notification anytime we have type completed and just send the user letting them know, hey, your image has been done. So it's a very, very flexible system. And if we did not have this, uh, you know, this callback, um, we wouldn't be able to notify the user because we would have to constantly pull the system to see, you know, what, what's happening, right? To see if that request has succeeded. And that's why I'm using this file for these specific tasks, okay? And if you guys want to see like an overview of this tool, uh, it's a really, really cool tool. Uh, makes it super easy to build all kinds of APIs. They have flows that you can create. A lot of really interesting things 
that a lot of these other tools do not have? Let me know in the comments below. I'll make a, like, a, like a comprehensive tutorial because it's a great tool that I look forward to using more and more. And so as a result, thanks to these real-time reads, we get back the data that we need. We can filter the data that we want. We're getting these events. And once we get type is completed, guess what? We can just display the image, which is exactly what I'm doing here. And so super flexible, super easy way to implement it. And you guys can modify this app. You can take it further because I have the prompts uh, saved as a uh, page state variable, right? So if you go over here, I have a prompt here. And so you can implement functionality in the app that allows the user to... Um, customize the entire prompt or parts of the prompt. And so what do I mean? Well, if you take a look at this prompt, you see how it says, take this portrait photo of a person, replace the output with a formal, right? So this over here, you can change that. You can make it a pull down. You can ask the user what kind of, uh, what do they want that image to, uh, to be transformed to, right? Uh, they can modify this over here. And same thing for these other prompts, right? So if you go over here, I have this prompt as a page state variable. And so it says here, take this uploaded photo of a person, transform it into a children's storybook illustration style. So you can modify that and get it to uh, to do what you want, right? Super easy. And same thing for the first scenario here. And so in this app, I'm doing image to image. You can also do text to image if you want, just like how I was doing here, purely text to image, okay? Because the model supports image to image or text to image. But I really like this pattern uh, that I'm using here in Flutterflow. And that allows me to get notified when the image is done and sell the user appropriately. And so if you guys like this pattern, or if you're looking to implement this functionality in your apps or build you know, a similar app such as this one, or take it even further, have this functionality as part of a bigger app, then you definitely want to be able to view and or clone this app. And you can do just that by joining our amazing Patreon community. Because when you join our amazing Patreon community, you'll be able to clone this app, but not only this app, you'll be able to clone all my previous apps, as well as all my future apps. You're gonna, get, you're gonna gain access to lots and lots of extra resources. Uh, there's an awesome community. You guys can connect, see what you guys are working on. Lots and lots of perks, especially coming up. In the near future, I'm going to be having a, a cool announcement. And of course, how can I forget? When you join our amazing Patreon community, you're going to be supporting this channel and supporting my work. And so if you like the kind of work that I'm doing, the kind of tutorials, then definitely check out our amazing Patreon community and consider becoming a member. And you can do just that via the first link in the description below the video.